You're listening to The Bible Guys, a podcast where a couple of friends talk about the Bible in fun and practical ways. I think we need to find a new way to open. Well, I, I've, we're always I've, like, I've been listening. Hey. Yeah, we were like, hey, we're here. Hey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, but it's just because we, maybe, maybe our listeners don't know this. This is a good way to open, <laughs> is, is to tell our listeners that uh, we think that uh, not preparing, there's a strength in that. That, well, that the whole thing is ad libbed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there, there's, a, there's. I mean, obviously, there could be a disadvantage. Well, the, whole, the whole concept of the of this podcast is it's two guys opening the Bible and talking about it. Like right. if we were sitting in a coffee shop and you and I just got together, it's a devotional thing. This isn't like that. Both of us prepared to come in and debate the Bible. That that would be a different kind of show. Right. Instead, what we're trying to do is talk about how the fact that the Bible can be understood. If you're yeah. a student of the Bible, you should be able to open it, talk about what's on the page in front of you, That's and right. have, a, have a meaningful conversation. Then we horse around a lot because we take our faith very seriously. We just don't take ourselves too seriously. Right, right. right. So so consequently, we think that a lot of it is uh, best ad lib because there's some value in that. Right, so, right. Uh, so anyway, so I just... So other than the fact that Desiree gives us a, a show sheet that says, right. hey, be silly for five minutes and then go talk about this topic. Right. Other than that, we don't really have a plan. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's a good way to open. There, we did it. There you go. We, we did a different okay. opening. So we don't know why you're listening because we don't have a plan. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, we kind of do. But um, okay. okay, so our segment today is called Guess the Word. It's kind of like taboo. And if you're watching on the YouTube, you know, where you visually can see this, uh, we're going to try to put the words that I'm not allowed to say right across the bottom of the screen uh, because that's really the challenge. The challenge is harder did, for did me. Did you just say if you're watching on the YouTube did I say the yes, YouTube? Yes, you did. That's so yes, funny. You You're so Hey, by the way, old. it used to be... Why are you so Hey, it old. used to be called The Facebook. Did you know that? <laughs> yes, I know that. Okay, all right. So, but it was like never... Like 300 hey, years ago. Hey, but it was never called The YouTube. The YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> the YouTube. All right, so uh, so here we go. Uh, uh, okay, first word. <clears throat> For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. <laughs> there it is. There you go. All right. I wasn't allowed to say listen, comply, submit, children, or parents. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Right? So, I figured, so you have to sing trust and obey. Trust and good, obey. Good old Baptist hymnal. That's right. Yep. That's right. That's right. Page 98. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> okay. Uh, it depends on I, actually. I do know that I only know the first, second, and fourth verses. <laughs> right. That's <laughs> You never sing the third verse. Because know nobody knows the third verse. That's right. In anyone. Uh, okay. This next one is, uh, okay, ready? Uh, the sower and the seed is this. What is it? A farmer. Oh, it's a parable. Yeah, it's a parable. That's right. Oh, okay. I wasn't allowed to say tale, Jesus, story, miracle, or Samaritan. Ooh, okay. Right? So, uh, so how about that? Parable. Yeah, yeah. parable. All right, how about this one? Um, oh, goodness gracious. Uh, wow. Uh, when you stab a goat on an altar, it's called a? Sacrifice. There it is. Wow. I wasn't allowed to say offering, blessing, worship, sheep, or God. Okay. Wow. That was hard to come up with that. When you stab a goat. <laughs> Yeah, just make it as gruesome as possible. Thank you. Sorry. You when you eviscerate. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, here we go. Next word. Um, our next big day coming up for Heritage is Sunday. No, the big one. A big one. Uh Easter. Yes. Easter. That's right. Yes. I wasn't allowed to say Sunday, spring. I wasn't allowed to say holiday or Jesus or resurrection. Okay. And I was going to, my instinct was to say something about the Easter bunny, yeah. but I couldn't even say bunny. And I was like, you, you'll never get that because right, right. without the word Easter. Um, okay. Because I was like, go non-religious. <laughs> then everybody's like, sacrilege. Yeah, that's right. Then you would have been kicked off the Bible right. guys. Yeah, you would have been the secular guy. That's right. All right. How about this one? Um, la, 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 la. Okay, last word. Uh, when I say to you that you don't owe me anymore, that is called what? Forgiveness. That is exactly right. Wow. That's right. Good I wasn't, job, Chris. Thanks, man. I wasn't allowed to say ask, <laughs> repent, apology, sorry, or pray. Wow. Yeah. And you got there. I did. So there it is. That's fantastic. Now, hopefully you played along, and hopefully you tried to beat Jeff with the answers. We forgot to ask you to do that, but hopefully you did yeah, it and had they fun. They did. They did. Awesome. Well, good. Well, there you go. So see, I can read your mind. Yes. I know what you're thinking right now. What am I thinking? I wish this guy'd shut up. <laughs> 
No. <laughs> I was thinking, I forgot to look at the topic of the scripture. Oh, okay. Which is... Uh, Jesus teaches about the Holy Spirit. Yes, exactly. So he's been peppering all of his teachings over the last several days. Yeah. Right now, you got to remember, all of these teachings over the last several days have been on the walk from the upper room to the Mount of Olives. Right. right. Um, but for which, us, which, by the way, we're taking not, it in It's chunks. not that far of a walk. No, no. No, no it's, it's how, how, how long would you say it is? I don't know. Uh, we walked from the top of the Mount of Olives down into the Kidron Valley and then up to the Eastern Gate. And not the Eastern Gate, but the, the Lion's Gate, I think, which is near the Eastern Gate. A mile and a half? Uh, yeah. It's probably in a leisurely stroll, not more than 35 minutes, 40 minutes, wouldn't yeah. you think? Yeah, I would think so, too. Yeah, yeah. Because it's a steep hill. Going right. in both directions, but yeah. Anyways, so Jesus has been peppering this conversation with the Holy Spirit. He keeps referring to the Holy Spirit as the advocate, right, and uh, or the helper. And so here we go in John chapter 16, verse 5. Jesus says, but now I'm going away to the one who sent me. Not any or not one of you is asking where I'm going. Instead, you grieve because of what I've told you. But in fact, it's best for you that I go away because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. The world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. Righteousness is available because I go to the Father, and you will see me no more. Judgment will come because the ruler of this world has already been judged. There is so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I said the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. Mm. Yeah, so this is his absolute declaration that I'm leaving you, but I'm not leaving you alone. And the thing that always blows me away, and it really does. I mean, not literally, but... You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not spontaneously combusting or, okay. or blowing away in the wind, but it does blow me away when I hear him say, uh, it's better for you that the Holy Spirit comes, right? So think about Jesus is there in person <laughs> and has grown up among men. He's, he's lived a sinless life. He's guiding them. He, they're following him closely. They have more of an, <laughs> they have more of a intimate relationship with the creator of the universe while on earth, then it would be fair to say than anybody in history mm. while on earth. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Because, because there, there, there's obviously relationships in heaven, but on earth is, is there anybody else? Cause you know, the rest of us, you know, in the old Testament, they look forward to the cross. Right. And then up to this point, he's there right now. We have, have, you know, maybe maybe it's a little unfair to include us, but I would even include us. I would say they're there walking and talking with Jesus. Anyway, that's right. The point well, is, you had his mom and his brothers and sisters. Yeah, they would have been with him for thirty years. Yeah, uh, or however long, because he was the oldest of the brothers and yeah. sisters. So however old they were, yeah. And, but... and Jesus promises that these twelve are going to sit on twelve thrones. Yeah, and right. and judge the twelve tribes of Israel. Right? right, right. And then he looks at them and says, uh, however. It's better for you that I go away never to return. It's better. And so if God promises that it's not only just good but better, it's it would be hard to even imagine in that moment. But yet uh, the Holy Spirit is, um, you know, in us, right? So the Holy Spirit comes in us. And so things change at this point because that's a concept that is uh, a blow-you-away concept because at this point God only had an address, right? He had right. an address. He had a right. central location the Holy of Holies in the middle of the temple, you know, and, and, and the Holy of Holies was just a small room on the innermost part of the temple. And soon when Jesus dies on the cross and says it is finished, the veil rips in two that separates God and man in the Holy of Holies. The, the, the God, God's presence floods out. And now all of a sudden God ceases to be at an address. And now the Bible says we are the temple of God. Right. Right. And God is in us. So just as God existed inside the temple in the Holy of Holies, now God exists inside us in the temple of our bodies. And so that's what Jesus is packaging in that. And of course, he knew all that. Right. They didn't understand that. Right. Uh, but but think about uh, how cool that is. So I heard a I heard a pastor one time say 
uh, uh, so he goes, uh, what? he goes, you have God in you. Oh, I know who it was. It was Louis Giglio. Oh. And, and Louis Giglio said, so you have God in you. He goes, don't underestimate how awesome that is. Because we look back at the Old Testament stories and we think, man, when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask questions like, you know, I go, I'm going to go up to uh, Moses. I'm going to say, Moses, what was it like to go up on the mountain and see the burning bush? And wasn't that awesome? And Moses is going to say, yeah, it was great, but... Let me ask you. Oh, I'm getting emotional just talking about it. <laughs> he says, let me ask you. He goes, what was it like to have the creator of the universe inside you and the power of God living in you that you were able to walk through, you know, life and have that kind of power accessible inside of you? Because I never got to experience that. Yeah. And most Christians are going to go, I, I, I don't know. I never really thought of it that way. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. We're walking right. around with the power of God in us. Right. And the devil has us believing it's nothing. <clears throat> Right. right. And so, I mean, it's such an emotional concept, yeah. you know, and then to think like we're the privileged ones, mm -hmm. you know, not, not, not Moses who sees the burning bush. Right. And, and, and not Joshua who sits in the tent of the meeting and, and all these different things that they've witnessed. It's us today, right now. We're the ones that have the privilege because Jesus said it and we're living in it. It's right. better right now. It's better on several levels. So certainly you're going to receive the Holy Spirit. It was also better because if Jesus didn't go die, didn't shed his blood, mm -hmm. didn't resurrect, mm -hmm. didn't ascend back to the Father, we couldn't be saved. That's right. Right? So that's going to be better too. Right? So it's it's both of those pieces together. So then he, he has referenced the Holy Spirit several times, often calling him the advocate, and then also talking about he calls him the helper. He's the spirit of truth. Right? So there's these these different... Uh, references as an advocate, he is the one who uh, goes between us. We know that the Book of Romans tells us that the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings we can't comprehend. Meaning, as we pray, the Holy Spirit intercepts those prayers, takes them to God, and communicates on a level we can't can't mm -hmm. imagine. One of the benefits of that then is you can't mess up in praying. Right. A lot of a lot of young Christians feel nervous about praying. What if I mess up? Right. What if I right? Holy but the Spirit's like, I got you. I got it. Don't worry. Yeah. I, I know what you mean. I know your thoughts, your intent, what you're trying to say, what you mean, what you're asking for. Right. I know all that. Right. And so it's that. that's why often I'll find myself saying, God, I'm not exactly sure what your will is, but that's what I want is your will. And knowing that the Holy Spirit can translate, hey, this is this is what he's asking for. Yeah. Right. Well, it's like and, it's like the when you see those movies, you know, the the brilliant code breakers, the one who's yes. the ones who see patterns. That's right? right. Yeah. And you're like, wow, he's such a great code breaker. That's the Holy Spirit's part of the Holy Spirit's job. He's sorting right? it out. Right. Sorting, sorting it, out. it yeah. out. Yeah. And then uh, this idea of being the comforter, certainly. Mm. He, Jesus talks a lot about persecution. He talks a lot about the difficult things. Uh, I've heard many people who've talked about being in prison and they were alone. And the only thing they had was the Holy Spirit. You know, comforting them, reminding them, and almost always they would talk about how the Holy Spirit kept bringing back different scriptures that they had memorized, that they had studied, mm -hmm. that they learned. The Holy Spirit would bring those back to memory when they felt like there was no other helper. Right? The mm -hmm. Holy Spirit would do that. He also says that the Holy Spirit will teach you in all truth. He'll guide you in all truth. Right. So one of those things when we don't know what is true and what's not true, uh, instead of just trying to sort it out logically all the time, although logic is part of what God's given us, it's a gift, but. Um, relying on the Holy Spirit to show us what is true and to point out what is false. I think it's super important. Um, he also, the Holy Spirit, he says, is here to convict the world. Mm. So, you know, I find myself a lot of times looking for an opportunity to share the gospel. I was just talking with a group of pastors here about the idea of, you know, encouraging their people to write down the names of 30 people that they know who aren't believers and just pray that the Holy Spirit would begin to convict those people of their sin and of their need for Jesus so that when you show up to have a spiritual conversation with them, they're already prepared. Right. Right. And it reminds me of, do you remember when uh, Joshua was afraid to fight and God said, I'm going to send my hornets out ahead of you, or I'm going to, mm. I'm going to go before you but with Moses. It was both I'm behind you and in front of you, right? Mm -hmm. I'm completely surrounding you. You know, uh, a lot of times I'll pray, God, go ahead of us before this service even begins today. Go ahead of us and prepare the hearts of the people on their way in right. uh, that need to hear from you. Or go ahead of me. I'm getting ready to go share the gospel with this guy. Go ahead of me. And hopefully over the weeks or the months that I've been praying for this guy ahead of time, the Holy Spirit's been kind of drilling into him and, and preparing. Uh, that's one of the things he does. He convicts the world of its sin. He calls to repentance. 
And then uh, it says that he hey, reveals God's standards. Let me, let me cause I know you got yeah, one yeah. more uh, coming up, but uh, the uh, every morning for like 30 years when I, you know, I've been a pastor for just like you, like 31 years or whatever it's been. And uh, I'm, I'm telling you, I think I, I'm not sure there's a Sunday that goes by when I say my prayers in the morning. And a lot of times I'll pray, like even on the, on the drive in and I'll say, uh, cause it's early, you know, it's always yeah. early when we get there and I'll say, God, I want you to convict people to get out of bed. And for all the people who are thinking about not getting out of bed because it's so comfortable. Mm -hmm. I'm praying that you're going to convict them and say, no, I have to get out of bed. (laughs) And I don't know why, but that has been a prayer. I think maybe every single Sunday I've ever, ever been a part of church because it's that same thing, what you're saying, which is, which is uh, the conviction. And then also the sort of like going ahead of us. Right. Right. And I I just, I don't know why I just always think of the people because it's so easy. To stay in bed, absolutely, right? and, absolutely. I, and I just I just pray that they're like, no, 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 I can't do it, I can't do it. <laughs> and they just get out of bed. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it also says so. If you're miserable in the morning on Sunday mornings, and you you wake up and then you can't go back to sleep and all that stuff, and you're trying to and you're trying to stay comfortable, just know Chris is praying that God makes you uncomfortable. That's, right. That's what he's That's doing. That's right. And That's by the way, doing. I unapologetically do. <laughs> I really do. Yeah, it's Chris's fault. You can next time you see him. Next time God does that, wakes you up and won't let you get comfortable again on yeah. Sunday morning. You wind up walking in the doors of the church, walk right up to Chris and tell him it's your fault. Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> thanks a lot. All I wanted to do is just roll over because it was raining. That's right. Uh, Jesus also <laughs> said that um, the Holy Spirit will reveal the standard of God's righteousness to anyone who believes. Right, and and that's it, that's important for us because Jesus isn't physically on Earth anymore. Right. So the disciples could look at Jesus and know what the standard was. And for us, you know, not having Jesus in front of us uh, uh, directly, physically, then we need the Holy Spirit to, and that's why the Holy Spirit will use our conscience a lot of times. The Holy Spirit will, will lean in on us and go, hey, you know, that's not the right direction, or Ooh, is, that, is that wise for you, or whatever. He's, he's helping us understand what the standard of righteousness is. And then um, uh, he, we know that Paul tells us he also seals us. He's the one that seals us. And it, it, Jesus kind of references it that we were in righteousness now, right? Mm-hmm. It, because of the Holy Spirit, he seals us until the day of redemption, until Jesus comes back. We are, are sealed in Christ through the Holy Spirit. Yeah, and, Ephesians uh, 4. Yeah, yeah, so there's so many things that the Holy Spirit does. But can I point out one thing? Yeah. Jesus says, I, I guess I pointed out like six things, but Jesus says the Holy Spirit doesn't draw attention to himself. Mm. And the Holy Spirit doesn't speak on his own. Sometimes some people play in the Holy Spirit, claiming that they're hearing from the Holy Spirit and they're doing all these amazing things in the Holy Spirit and all these things. It's the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit doesn't talk about himself. Mm. And the Holy Spirit doesn't bring attention to himself. And the Holy Spirit doesn't bring some kind of new revelation. He says he's only bringing what I've told him. Jesus is the Word, the Word of God, right? So... Um, the Holy Spirit isn't bringing attention to himself and isn't trying to get you to just play in the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's whole job is to point us to Jesus and his finished work on the cross. Yeah. That's his job. Yeah. 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 So um, <clears throat> there's always a thing that uh, whenever I hear a person pray and they don't pray to the Heavenly Father and they pray to Jesus, mm-hmm. uh, I never yeah, I never rebuke that. I'm, I'm, I just accept it and move on because mm-hmm. technically it's Father, sure. Son, Holy Spirit, one God, three persons, right? But but in my mind, I always think, oh, theologically, if you really want to get technical, every single reference in the Scripture talks about us being reconciled to the Heavenly Father. So our relationship was broken to the Heavenly Father, and our relationship is with the Heavenly Father. Jesus is the mediator mm-hmm. who brings us back so that we can pray to and Jesus always prayed to the Father, yeah, yeah. right? So you can pray to Jesus if you want. I'm sure that that's fine since they're one God, three persons. But, but Well, every person who came to Jesus and needed him to help them, he was, they were talking to God. Right, right. And that, they were like, exactly Jesus, right. could you help me out? That's right, that's yeah. right. But in my mind, I'm like, it's better and, and more spiritual. It's, the, it's more theologically It's more sound. theologically accurate. Yeah, yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. so in the same way, in the same way, um, <clears throat> people say this phrase all the time. And they always say, like, uh, Holy Spirit, come down. Mm-hmm. And I always think, the Holy Spirit's here. Right? It's like, uh, I understand what you're meaning, but theologically, that's not correct. And then they'll say, uh, okay, uh, <clears throat> wow, the Holy Spirit was really present in that worship service today or that gathering, whatever it was. And man, we were filled with the Spirit like we've never been filled before. Right? 
to which I'm saying, like, I understand what you're saying. But theologically, if you want to get technical, uh, we believe, based on what Jesus says, is that when you uh, become a Christian, when you put your faith and trust in Christ, you receive the Holy Spirit, and you'll never, ever be filled more with any more Holy Spirit than you have right now. Right. You have all the Holy Spirit you need right now. <clears throat> There's never a time where the Holy Spirit leaves you ever, right? I'll never leave you nor forsake you. There's never a time where you have less of the Holy Spirit than you have more of the Holy Spirit. Because theologically speaking, uh, when uh, when those times where you say, man, the Holy Spirit was really present and, and I had more of the Holy Spirit, that's not accurate, accurately uh, or true. It means that the Holy Spirit had more of you. Right. Right. That's what it means. It means that <clears throat> there was a time where you experienced a really great thing and, and th- you didn't have more of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit had more of you. And so, again, I'm not going to I'm not going to rebut anybody who says that. And I know what they mean, uh, you know, and it's a great thing to celebrate. But theologically, it's not true. You, you have all the Holy Spirit you need right now if you're a follower of Christ. Uh, so let's 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 maybe stray away and just sort of, you know, re, you know, begin to rethink uh, how we say that, because yeah. that also is a little bit of a danger there. Right. So it's like it's like, man, uh, uh, our services are way more Holy Spirit filled than your services. Right now, nobody right. would ever probably say that. They do, but that's they do. They do on a semi-regular basis. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But 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 you see what I'm saying? Yes. It, it sort of paints the picture yeah. that God is more present yeah. Yeah. here than it is here. Right. But if you want to get theologically correct, it just means that 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 this that this group over here wasn't as submitted to the Holy Spirit, possibly in some cases. Right. 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 So if it, it feels it, like there's really, a lack of God's presence. It's usually a comment on, boy, I really feel like feel like the Spirit moved me. Yeah, but what they're saying is the spirit was in this service, right? Well, the spirit's with all the believers all That's the right. time. So I think it was Tozer who used to say it was either Tozer or Tory, one of those old great preachers, who said the question is not how much of the spirit do you have, but how much of this, how much of you does the spirit have, right? Right. And uh, and I think that that's the bigger issue for us to understand. It's all about surrender. So if you want God's spirit to move in you, it's about you surrendering to the spirit, right? Right, because he's already in you. Right, right. Uh, that's what Jesus says. Don't you know that? Or what Paul says? Don't you know that you're the temple of God? Mm-hmm. God lives in you, and so it's a surrender issue. But yeah, and then you know, it's because of the Holy Spirit that Jesus tells us, "Hey, you're going to do greater things than me, right? Mm-hmm. Someday." Which these are all in the same conversation here. Mm-hmm. So good. Yeah, and uh, and I heard one time that uh, I know that's our time coming up. Uh, I heard one time that said that if you think about from a thirty thousand foot view of the Bible, uh, the, the the role of the Father in the Old Testament uh, seems to be that God the Father is the one that has the will. He's the one that has the will for your life. Mm-hmm. It's 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 ne- Jesus is always pointing to it's the will of the Father, mm-hmm. the will of the mm-hmm. Father, and 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 such is the case of the person of God in our lives, right? So God God has the will for you, the God the Father, and then Jesus. Uh, I, I've heard it described as the one who initiates the work of the Father, the one who executes the will of the Father, and then uh, and then it's the Holy Spirit's job in our lives, who's the completer of the work, mm-hmm. the completer of the work, and and all of these things. Uh, you know, if if you think about every role that you described, uh, uh, the roles that the Holy Spirit has in our lives, it is to bring about our faith into completion, and He's the completer of the will of the Father in our lives. So, it's yep. really cool. Well, hey, that it looks like it's our time, and uh, we will see you next time, hopefully, on The Bible Guys. 